All righty ho. Good afternoon there, Dylan, my man. Uh, one of my favorite Hello. humans to speak to. Uh, welcome back to the Ridiculously Human podcast, bud. Thanks, buddy. You you made me wait a long time. You made me wait a long time. <laughs> the... Only like three years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, classic. I mean, it's it's quite funny, actually. I mean, I say your name, Dylan, but people might actually, you know, not know that is, is actually your real name. They might know you better as as tuggy or or am i the only one that uh that knows you as tuggy but buddy, you're the only one that calls me tugboat <laughs> it's the only uh, one that was willing to take on the name you know <laughs> the same as the same as for people listening i call him sparkles it's proprietary no one else is allowed to call you that but sparkles because you bring sparkles man you bring positive sparkles into into our lives oh well but so, yeah. thank you I, I appreciate that and uh, and and tugboats we we have our reasons for tugboats, but it's because you're such a flippant trooper, bud, and and you you just sort of don't stop going. So, so uh, that's, that's what we're uh, going to steer. That's the that's story that we're you... sticking to. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> classic, my man. So, bud, you you are hundredth guest actually, and that was uh, okay. back in Feb 2020, and um, yeah, here we are, April 23, which is <laughs> crazy. Over three years ago, was it 2019? I think it was 2019, dude. Was it? Cheapest, yeah. Well, that was, was the year that I was that was the year that I was in hospital, so it was 2019, I think, actually. Yeah, wow, so four we... years. Cheapest, okay, cool. That's a long time then, but um, yeah, so so yeah, lots obviously obviously happened since then, man. And um, you know, now you're, you're in much sort of better health than, than you were then, you were going through quite a rough patch. Um, and I think, yeah. um, I think you, you've really sort of focused a lot on, on self care over the last few years. How's that kind of looked for you? Yeah, I mean, I suppose it looks different for everybody. Um, for me, it was, um, it's a bit of a complicated thing. This we, I mean, we spoke about on that on that hundredth episode, and and actually, when we did that episode, I remember I still wasn't like a hundred percent mentally. I was a little bit out of it and stuff. I think I remember like breaking out into a sweat halfway through the conversation, but. Um, yeah, it, it, you know the, the the condition that I have the TTP, which is um, for people listening, it's a it's a blood disorder. Your your blood basically doesn't clot. Um, it can be fatal if if not treated. Um, and I hadn't had any issues for a long long time, but also I I, I do believe still today that it was um, also uh, you know it was a it was a good twelve years that I had no sort of relapses or anything, and I do believe that the relapse was it because of an accumulation of not looking after myself in terms of how I manage my stress was the biggest part. Um, and, you know, and then, and then like what I've, everything that I've read um, since about this condition and stuff, it's, it's all based on um, how you manage stress. So, so not putting your body under any stress um, from a mental perspective, emotionally, and then obviously physically. So, um, tried to focus the last sort of three, four years on on that, and and just being able to from a from a work perspective and a, and just daily life perspective handling stress, and then physically as well, you know, like just trying to keep the weight down, trying to make sure that I'm not boozing it up too much, um, being careful what I put in my body, uh, that kind of thing. You know, the more and more you read about you know these bacterial infections and stuff, which was one of the other issues that happened when I was in hospital. Um, all of that stuff can, is is aggravated by stress that you cause in your that that can happen in your body and and so yeah so the last few years has been a lot about that um, already in that stint in hospital because it was it was almost half a year that I was in hospital it was five months um, added then was when you guys dropped the hundredth episode I was back in hospital um, with knee with knee issues and stuff and and um, and yeah I mean even then I was starting to kind of just into meditation breathing exercises that kind of stuff um and just have kind of carried on trying to make that a habit um of being able to to mostly manage stress and and stress comes in all forms as you know it comes in a physical physical way the way you treat your body but how you manage day-to-day -day life how you manage work stresses at work the job that i'm in is quite a stressful job um so it's all about so so yeah the last few years it's just been about managing that and, and keeping that under wraps and listening to my body listening to people tell me when I'm not looking good listening to people tell me when I'm my eyes are looking a bit hazier than what they should do and and 
and uh, and just trying to take care um, from that perspective. Um, I, I love this life that I have. I love my family. I want to be around for a long time. I want to see my kids get old and, and get married. And I want to be a granddad at one point. It's a long way down the road. But, you know, all these kind of things, you want to be around for that. So, so yeah, uh, basically, in a nutshell, um, just been managing how, how to manage stress and, and how to take care of, of those different you know, facets of, of managing stress physically, emotionally, mentally, um, all of the above. Yeah. That's awesome. And I mean, you, you're looking literally bad, like, you know, like a million times healthier or you just, you're, the, the life is in your face. You know, you could, you could see when we were chatted last time, you're like, yeah, you had been through, through the ringer basically, you know, and, um, yeah, I don't, yeah, I I mean, don't think yeah. I could, I, I think I couldn't frown at that time. I don't think I it looked like I had Botox. I still, we still laugh about it now, but there was a stage where like my forehead wouldn't move, you know, now it's probably too wrinkly than what I would like, but uh, it, it wouldn't move. Like I didn't have any like expression in my face. When you saw me that time at the house, uh, when you and Marissa came for lunch that time, I mean, I was, I was thin, but I was, yes, I was, uh, uh, I was just like this, basically, this, you know, flopping piece of flesh and, uh, and yeah, I just needed to get back. And a lot of, a lot of physical therapy, a lot of mental therapy, a lot of, um, dealing with the, um, you know, they, they talk about P PTSD after things like this and um, uh, dealing with a lot of those things. So there was a time when um, if I heard a, a machine beeping, I would almost, I would st straight away start to get quite anxious because I would remember the machines in hospital um, and stuff like that. And, and yeah, I mean, since then last year, so 2022, I was, I was back in hospital and I was there for about another two months on and off. But it was like, it was okay because I felt a lot more prepared for it. Like I felt a lot it, mentally, I was I was a lot more prepared for what it meant and what I needed to do just to stay on top of things and 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 manage that from from a from a from a mental and an emotional point of view. Um, so yeah, feeling feeling much better obviously than what I did back then, and and uh, it's good it's good to know that uh, that you see it as well. You know. Yeah, for sure, bud. And um. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's really good to to have you back, and, I, and I'm super thankful for that. But actually, the the last three years of uh, sort of being on a podcast uh, hiatus, you were really instrumental in um, egging me on, should we say, at like getting going again. But so I just want to say, like, thank you so much for that. You know, the, the, the one of the big reasons that this is back is because I had you and um of course your your son benji as well i didn't want to let him down you know the the, the cute little messages <laughs> you got him yeah. to send me to say gareth come on let's go <laughs> i couldn't let the two of you guys down so so thanks for that man um just talking a bit about podcasting uh, you've actually within that time you you've started your own podcast uh, called portugal the simple life uh, can you just speak a little bit about that. Um, like what, what, what is it about and, and how did it come about actually doing it? Yeah. So, so we started it in 2020. It was um, right at the start of all the COVID uh, drama. Let's call it drama for, for lack of a better word. Um, you know, everything kind of went into lockdown. Everybody panicked. Um, nobody knew what was going to be happening. Um, yeah. For, for more for the um, sort of the, uh, the mental side of our of our of our people of our of our colleagues and stuff we, we closed our offices and stuff for for real estate that's quite a tough thing to do because you need to be in a car face to face with people to to sell um but we'd been thinking about it for a while kind of as a, a as a spin-off to to some of the marketing stuff that we've already been doing we wanted it to be genuine we wanted it to be something that people could really engage with um not just sort of like a gimmicky thing and um, and I've always wanted to. I mean, yeah. Actually, funny enough, turning the table straight around back on you. One of my big reasons for for wanting to do a podcast was because of you and and Craig and what you guys were doing those years back with um, with uh, the ridiculously with the, with this podcast. And um, and yeah, there was a there was a bit of a gap, I suppose, in in the kind of information now today. If you go on to YouTube and the internet, there's a lot of information about Portugal. But back then it was still kind of up and coming. And, um, and I wanted to do a, a, a podcast about Portugal from an insider's perspective and interviewing people that are living here, both Portuguese people and, and foreigners, uh, about life here and what makes it such a special place. Um, 
it's a place that I'm deeply, deeply in love with. I love living here. It was the best decision I ever made was moving to Portugal. And, and I wanted to share a bit of that experience and, and, and speak to people who have done the same thing. Um, so yeah, started in 2020, didn't really know where it would go and, and what to expect. Um, started with a, you know, as I'm sure you guys know, to get the first couple of guests, it's always a challenge and nobody knows who you are. And, and then um, the turning point was we got a guy, I got a guy on um, a winemaker who I, I randomly met um, at a wine tasting event a few years before. Um, he didn't know what a podcast was, but he was like, yeah, no problem. I'll, 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 I'll have a chat. We'll, we'll have a chat. And he, he, his wife helped him set up Zoom. He was like quite an older guy and, um, and turned out he's quite a well-known winemaker and, and that, and it kind of snowballed from there. And, and from there, I managed to get um, uh, one of the CEOs of, of Delta, which is Portugal's biggest, one of Portugal's biggest brand, if not the biggest. And he came on and then it just sort of kind of snowballed from there and we've had um like uh, football players and um very well-known mu musicians and fado singers and actresses and politicians and more winemakers and restaurant owners and it's just been amazing it's been one of the most rewarding rewarding things and um as i'm sure you know i mean podcasting is just amazing you you get to meet people talk to people hear different stories and it's been incredible so yeah more than 150 episodes now still going strong um and uh and it's just awesome i just love it uh, i love it uh, i love doing it i hope i never have to stop uh and um yeah it's been 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 amazing yeah that's so cool man um i love to hear i love like the, the end part as well where you talk about like podcasting and and sort of how it's almost life-changing because you you're speaking to these amazing people you like literally have this dedicated time with them to you know, pick their brains on, on things. Yours is more in, in relation to like what they really enjoy about Portugal, but then also a bit about like, you know, their life stories and, and stuff like that. So it's like, you just, I mean, it's just amazing, isn't it? Just like listening to people, um, just like learning about, you know, about them, uh, their worldviews. And uh, I think it makes you, yeah, just, it, it helps grow you as a person uh, doing a podcast. Don't you yeah, yeah, and I think you know, um, I think the moment that we stop, I mean, we, we you and I have spoken about this so much with our with our voice notes and stuff. But the, the moment that you stop learning, um, then you stop growing. And and um, even though like the podcast is a is a is a real niche podcast, you know, it's 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 about Portugal and it's about life in Portugal. So not not too many not not too many head scratches in terms of what is it about, but. But the people that I've had on, I mean, I had one guy, uh, Joao Garcia. Um, he's a Portuguese guy. He's one of the. He's one of the. I think he's. If I don't remember, he's one of fifteen guys in the world to have climbed all eight of the highest mountains. Mm. Um, and uh, and I think all of them he did without air, uh, without oxygen. I mean, it's just amazing. So you speak to these guys, and and the thing that's been amazing for me, and and this is something is uniquely i believe is uniquely portuguese is your accessibility to people here is just incredible back in south africa to find a uh, to ha have an hour to speak to a ceo of a huge multi-million dollar biggest brand company it would never have happened i mean the guy would have been like no i don't know you know you wouldn't even you wouldn't have even been able, um, you wouldn't have even been able to reach the guy and that's been like the joy of of this is um I remember we, I got this one guy on the podcast called Crivelozo and like, he's like the biggest name in Portuguese music. Like you ask any Portuguese person, if they know this guy, they're like, yeah, they can sing a song of his off by heart or three. And um, it was literally a case of sent a message two days later, his agent called and was like, yeah, when do you want to do this? And it was just, I mean, it's just incredible. Um, so, so that that's been cool. And, and the things that I've learned about my home, uh, you know, my home now is Portugal. The things that I've learned about my home and and the people that I've met because of this thing um, has been has been awesome. And then, yeah, the the um, the other part that is is re really rewarding is the, how you touch other people's lives. And I had a guy that randomly reached out um, a, a couple of weeks ago who was just like, "Listen, I just want you to let you know you've changed my life." And uh, he was sitting in Portugal at the time. And I mean, I'll probably never meet the guy, but he was like, if it wasn't for you, I would never have discovered this country. And he's happy and, and living here. And, and it's awesome. We've received, I've received a couple of threats as well. <laughs> from, uh, because we, we made once we, we, I had a guy on the 
the podcast, you made some some comments about Trump, and I got a I got a nice uh, a death not a death threat, a nice threatening email. Uh, but I mean, it's just been amazing. It's just been absolutely awesome. Yeah, that's so cool, man. Um, I, I like what you say there about the guests and stuff. And I think one of the cool things about a podcast, obviously, Portugal sounds like, you know, they're more, um, they'll they'll come on the podcast more more than say other countries. But like, having a podcast allows you the opportunity and gives you permission to invite people to to talk. You know, and like, and and therefore you can sort of reach out to people who are probably going to say no, you know, a lot of the time, but then there might be that one person who says yes, you know, and that could also change everything for you. And I think that's yeah. what's great about having a podcast is you're like, you know what, I've got this podcast. I talk to people about this and that, and would you like to come on? And then some of them are like, yeah, flip, definitely. So, so it's really cool, man. And, and it's so lucky that you, that you change that guy's life as well, you know, and you, that's, I mean, if that's one like amazing win, then, then happy days for doing the yeah. podcast. So, yeah, so yeah, exactly. tell me a bit about, a bit about Portugal. Obviously you speak about Portugal a lot on the podcast, but what is it that you love about Portugal, bud? Well, the, the, I suppose the, the, mainly the, 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 the thing that I love is, is in the title. We, 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 um, we were thinking of a name for it. Um, and my my boss and I we we went to um this marketing um like it was like a digital marketing seminar in Lisbon once and um the thing was so boring I, I like actually honestly fell asleep through a lot of it there's pictures that prove it and um but there was this guy who got up and um his name was uh, let me try to remember his name now uh Joa Joa Santos and he and he's a he's a marketing guy. He does marketing campaigns for Nike and for Dove and 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 all of these things. And and um, my boss actually got up during the seminar and asked him a question and said, "What's Portugal's best export? Like, what is Portugal known for? Because you know you've got the French that are known for uh, you know p- uh, um, wine and pastries, and you've got the Italians for pizza and and all of these kind of things. And and what about Portugal? And he says. Um, Portugal is known for simplicity. It's been perfecting simplicity for generations. And that was kind of like the little light bulb, bulb moment was uh, Portugal, the simple life. And it's really that, man. Uh, life is just simple here. Um, you know, obviously you've got you've got places like the Algarve and Lisbon that are a little bit more commercial and a bit more now touristy and things like that. But certainly the, the area that, that I live in, um, you know, people still say hello. Uh, if you walk into a, a little cafe and you don't greet everybody in the cafe, they look at you a bit strangely, as opposed to the other way around. If you greet somebody on a on a on a tram in London, they'll look at you like you're a crazy person, you know. Um, and in, in Portugal, it's the other way around. People have time for a conversation. Um, just the way that they celebrate things, the the way that they take time for 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 each other. Um, it's safe. Uh, one of my big reasons for leaving South Africa was at at some point I, I knew I'd want a family. At some point I knew I'd, I'd want to be married and 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 have kids. And I did not want to raise a family in South Africa. Um, and uh, the life that my kids have here is just incredible. They they're safe. It's calm. Um, I, they can go play in the street. They can be kids. You know, they can be kids and and get their you know get their clothes dirty and go and roll around and ride bikes in the street and um yeah i mean the weather's lovely that always helps um the food is amazing the people are the thing that makes the country so special is is they just uh, without exaggerating probably the most welcoming and friendly and genuine people that i've ever met in my life and i've done quite a bit of traveling um and yeah it's just a simple life you know they they value things here the simple things the you know taking time to sit down and have a meal um taking time to stop and, and have a conversation portuguese people generally will will help you without asking for anything in return um that's been my experience since day one and and yeah I, it's difficult sometimes to put in words um one of the guests on the podcast said that it's it, it's just the way that the place makes you feel and and after 14 years of living here the, this place makes you feel good it just makes you feel good and happy and and uh, yeah, it's an amazing place. Um, we travel a lot. My wife and I travel a lot throughout the country. And it's the diversity in the country in terms of the way it looks, in terms of the geography, mountains, beaches, valleys, wine w- w- vineyards, uh, wine farms, 
uh, man, just lakes, everything, everything that you can imagine is here in, in a very small sort of geographic area. Um, and it's just awesome. It's just, it's just awesome. The place, it makes me happy. It, just, it makes me happy. Yeah, man. Some of the, the pictures that you sent me in the last year or so of your holiday and stuff, I'm like, jeepers, that's, you know, like you said, it's really diverse and just super beautiful and picturesque. And yeah, man, it sounds like a, it, it sounds rather idyllic. You know, I think that that sort of simple life and like old traditional values is, is such a nice way to live. It's, it's kind of sad how many parts of the world seem to have kind of moved away from that. And it's, everything seems frenetic and digital and online and shouting at each other and judging and you know, it's nice to hear yeah. that there's still a place on earth like like what you just described yeah and i mean you know it's it's a strange thing because it, it is a country that's 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 kind of finding its way in the world today because it, it, you know it, it's not a th i think people often kind of the misconception is portugal is kind of this third world backward country um, and in some ways it is in the way that people live and the way that things are done here. And, and that's what makes it so beautiful and pure, you know, um, but it's a country that's also coming terms with globalization and, and uh, commercialism. And it's a country that's coming to terms with the fact that for the first time in a long time, it's people go to places when they think, where am I going to retire one day? Where am I going to move one day? Um, the amount of American clients that we have now compared to what we used to have five years ago is insane and it's literally thousands of americans are looking at and going where should i go if i leave america and portugal is on the top of that list and 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 that's you know so for the first time ever portugal's gone from this country that's kind of flown under the radar and been stuck there in the western corner to now a place that's very much in the mainstream um still more lisbon then, then the, and maybe Porto, then a lot of the, the other country, uh, the rest of the country. Um, so it's a place that's also finding its feet, you know, and with, with a lot of foreign investment coming in, you always have those other issues that a lot of other European countries have gone through with gentrification and, and these kind of things. <clears throat> but it's a country that's managed to, certainly in the time that I've lived here, and it's, it's kept its identity. People are still decent to each other. You know, you and I have come from a, we came from a country where everyone was just so super aggressive and angry all the time. Uh, and I think that's just prog progressively worse in South Africa. You take it, you look at the UK, they've just been pissed off since, since the B word, you know, it's just been this place where everyone's angry and upset. Um, America, they've got their, their animosity with, you know, between the Republicans and the Democrats and, and here you come here and, and people are just like chilled, you know, and, and we've got our political problems and the, the country's got its own issues. And, and the, you know, there's, there's a large part of the country that's very unhappy with, with, the, with the current uh, government and things. But it's almost like people put that to the side when they're dealing with each other. And that's something really special. Um, again, just having the time to, to have a conversation, having the time to chat not judging people portuguese like their discretion they they like to leave people to themselves um and so they they appear a lot of the time to be quite standoffish but they're not they're just respecting your space and your time um but yeah it's really the people that make it such a such a such a special place and then yeah i mean like you mentioned i mean we've just been to some amazing places that man castles and palaces and 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 wine farms and the doru valley and and places like this are just amazingly beautiful and you just or like, wow, all of this is in this, you can drive from north to south of Portugal in seven hours, you know, I mean, that was like a trip to the beach for us in South Africa, you know, um, and it's just, yeah, it's just incredible, man, I could, I could talk about it forever, but it's just, it's just a special place, but again, the thing that really makes it special is the people, the people are, are genuine, down to earth, caring, kind, um, unassuming, non-judgmental, um, you know, you, again, you, you have this country that's predominantly Catholic, but they're super open in terms of gay marriage, in terms of, you know, uh, religion. They don't shove religion down down your throat. They're not judgmental in any way. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just an incredible place, an incredible place to be. Well, but you can uh, definitely see the the salesman in you in you come out. That's for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. But <laughs> I'm, I'm it's sold. not it's not hard. <laughs> it's like the easiest thing to talk about in the world, you know. So so yeah, it's it's um, 
it's uh it's it, 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 the nice thing about that is when when I, when my clients do ask me about portugal i'm talking from more than a decade of of living here and and, and experiencing it and, and knowing what it really is like and that's always uh that's always a good place to 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 start from this is a, a kind of like open question um mm. obviously you deal with uh with clients from around the world kind of all the time uh, you, you also run a sales team. What, what, what is like dealing with with people? Talk to you about people. Wow, uh, that's a, yeah, that is a, a deep one. Um, I think everybody's looking for the same thing. I think in their own way, people want the same thing. Um, people just want want to be happy. Um, people want to feel safe. People want their kids to be safe. Uh, they want to be. People generally want to be in a place where they feel good, you know. Um, and I think the thing that I've learned from dealing with clients from all over the world is, I, I, I think you have people that are just. And we had it. In, I mean, we 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 experienced that living in South Africa, and, and you the same probably in London. You're running around making dust, chasing your tail, and eventually you're kind of like, for what? You know? Can so that I can have that big car and live in that big house. And and I look at people in, yeah, you know, I look at I have people that I know in South Africa who are much, much wealthier than me, but the quality of life that they have is is less, far, far less. And and um and I think people just want to be somewhere they just feel good. You know, it sounds, it sounds too simple. It sounds like I've simplified it. Um, and then, yeah. And I, th and I think you're, you're, we're seeing this more so than ever before the world is changing and, and almost, I think people feel like where they are, where they live or where they're from is not the place that it was, you know? And I, th I think I think people want that. I think people want to feel safe and want to feel at home somewhere and feel comfortable somewhere, not, not only on a, on a material way, but in a, in the way that place makes you feel. And if I look at the clients that I've got, Americans, Canadians, British, Polish lately, they're all in places where it doesn't feel good anymore to be there. They're all in places where their cities are changing in front of their eyes for various reasons. They're, scared of what's going to happen in the next five years they're scared for americans they're scared of what's going to happen to their kids when they go to school every day for polish they're scared of what's going to happen if this war progresses anymore uh for british they don't know what's going to happen next there's a lot of changes happening um and they just want to be somewhere where they feel i think where they can just experience a good life calm life peace and peace on multiple levels um but yeah, the world is changing. Uh, the world is changing. And, and, and the world that people knew and their countries and their homes that they knew before aren't what they used to be. And, and that makes a lot of people sad. Um, but it makes people wanting to act and do something about it, which is also which is also interesting. I don't know if that answers the question. That was a fantastic answer. Uh, <laughs> do you find that um, the guys that are sort of investing in Portugal, the, the foreigners, they... Are they kind of like lumping themselves in the same place? Like say Americans, I don't know, go to Lisbon and then the British go down south. Is there is there some sort of like commonality? Um it it all I mean, this is where it differs from person to person. You know, you you have people that want to be somewhere, you know, you have like let's I mean, let's just a spade a spade. The Algarve, for example, is basically in many parts of the Algarve is basically the UK in the sunshine. You know, it's, it's a lot of guys that have invested down there. It's golf resorts, it's closed resorts. Um, you have a lot of parts of the Algarve that com go completely quiet in the winter months because everybody's gone back to work or whatever the case is. And um, the Americans of late, there's a big kind of Californian connection with Lisbon and Kishkaish. Um, And I think those are people that possibly want to have the comforts of English speakers around them or the perception of that comfort, English speakers around them, a bit of familiarity, being able to walk into a British store, being able to walk into a British pub, 
uh, being able to go to an American social event, these kind of things. But then you have the people that when they moved to Portugal, they wanted to feel like it's Portugal. They want it to be genuine. They want to be part of the Portuguese community. They want to make friends with their neighbors. They want to learn the language. The, the thing in Portugal that's really cool is you don't really need to. Uh, it's a country where everybody pretty much speaks English or in the worst case scenario understands English. Um, but of course, you know, when you're moving far away and you first initially acclimatizing, you want to have that familiarity, which I, I completely understand. But for example, like where we are north of Lisbon on the Silver Coast, it's more authentic Portuguese lifestyle. So you have people that want that as well. Um, so I suppose it just get, the, ma the mainstream is, you know, the, the place people know, Lisbon, Algarve or, or whatever the case is. Um, but you do have people that kind of they want to. They, they want to move to Portugal and, and they want it to feel like Portugal. You know, they want it to feel like um, the, the, the idea they had before where they're part of the, the local community, they're in a local village, they're going to the little farmer's markets or to the, to the traditional cafe and bakery. Um, so yeah, just, it, it varies from person to person, I guess. Um, for me, when I moved, I, I wanted it to feel like Portugal. I wanted to walk out my door and know, Hey, I'm I'm in Portugal. I'm not on a golf resort. Um, I'm not in a I'm not in a big expat community. I wanted to be in a place where I could do both. You know, where I could speak Portuguese, learn the language, uh, meet local people as well. Um, and that was that was my 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 idea. But everybody's a little bit different in in what they feel more comfortable with and what they feel um, attracted to. But certainly my my clients who I deal with, they, they want to be in the real Portugal. They want to be in an authentic Portuguese village or, or town. They want to learn. They, they are learning the language. Um, they want to have Portuguese neighbors. They don't want to only be surrounded by expats. Um, so, so, yeah, it depends on, on the individual. Yeah, that's cool. I, I mean, I remember all the times I've visited there. Well, besides the time I've been on like boys trips down to the Algarve, <laughs> it it has felt kind of like very, very traditional. I, one of my, one of my good memories when I, when we were in um, Eresera was there was this, there's this like road that goes behind the beach and there is this track that, that this lady or I don't know, family ran and it's actually a bakery. And yeah, the, 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 the red trucks. Yes, man. Honestly, the the best bread you've ever tasted for like nothing. Like it's like cheap yeah. as chips, you know. What I mean? yeah. And I mean, yeah. I was like, yes, see, this place is dangerous because <laughs> it's such yeah. good bread, and it was such a it's such a cool spot. Like you know, like say after spending a few hours on the beach, you you drive past, and there's like the smell of fresh bread and you're like oh let's just get a loaf for the afternoon <laughs> yeah i guess you yeah. do that every day you're gonna um you're gonna sort of um struggle to keep the yeah, weight it's dangerous there. so we, we get, we've got a um a bread van you know so remember like remember when we grew up in south africa you could hear the ice cream truck yes. with that that's that siren that, like you know that music playing it was actually quite creepy that music thinking back now i'm surprised it didn't give us more nightmares but but in in um in in most villages uh certainly in our area you have a bread van and you hear the guy hooting from like a couple of blocks away and like everyone comes out with their like 50 cents or their one euro and they buy like a bag full of bread that's just been literally baked that day. Um, and then in some places they even have um, a fish, a fish van as well. So you can like just buy some fish off the back of the van. Uh, and there's even, even in some villages you have a guy that comes, uh, comes around um, every couple of months with like this weird like whistle sound and he's a guy walking his bike and he's there to sharpen knives so <laughs> people bring their knives out into the road <laughs> sharpen their knives on the back of the guy's bike and take their knives back into the kitchen it's amazing so it is it's, it, you, you've got that um you've got that old world feeling which I, I i love so much uh, and that simplicity again coming back to that simplicity but then you know in our village we've got fiber so we've got like amazingly fast internet uh you know and all of that kind of thing so you got all those the modern stuff that you need but you're in just like a place that feels like it's 20 years removed you know and i love that it's just it's just awesome yeah no that's super cool but yes he um if you had like milk trucks as well that would be that would be even more of a bonus i swear <laughs> um, yeah not not big milk milk drinkers in portugal it's difficult to find fresh milk actually 
Wow. It's all um, long life milk. So which isn't, isn't the healthiest milk around as well, you know? So, so yeah, not, they're not big milk drinkers. So yeah, um, no milk, no milk, man, unfortunately. I'm going to have to invest in some cars when I get there eventually, but <laughs> easy. easy. I know a guy, I know a guy. Okay. Like, like, <laughs> so, but on, on our messages, uh, we speak uh, a lot like on audio messages and stuff. And, and we actually speak a lot about fatherhood. Uh, you, uh, you have two step uh, daughters and you have your own son as well. Um, and yesterday, if I, if I'm correct, was like car cleaning day. Uh, how was that yeah, for you? Sunday. Like it's a nice tradition that you guys have. Yeah, um, it's just one of the things that I do with my boy. Um, I, I suppose just a little bit of a, like um, a thing just to teach him a bit of routine and responsibility and and things like that. And, and basically every Sunday, if he's, and you know, the last uh, couple of, about a month ago, we missed a couple of weeks because he wasn't well. And and um, and so he was just resting and stuff. But I take him with me every Sunday to go, to go clean the car. Um, and I give him a euro and I give him the option of either saving it or buying some candy. He always chooses the candy route. Um, but yeah, I mean, he runs around there with, with, um, with his little cloth and he polishes the wheels and now he's upgraded. He says, he, now he wants to, usually after I, I, I spray the car down, I wipe it with, um, with a, with, um, paper towel to, to, to clear the windows. And now he wants to now do that, you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, and it's, the, it's just a joy. And, and even the, the guy who owns the car wash place, um, whenever he sees Benji, they stop and they have a little chat. And, um, if he's not there with me, he asks me, where's my, where's my helper and you know, what's happening. And like one of the weeks he was at a birthday party, so he could even come with me to wash the car. <clears throat> And the guy was like, "Oh, where's 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 your help?" I said, "No, he's at a he's at a he's at a party today." He goes, "Oh, okay, okay, that's very nice." And yeah, again, you know, it's just the the beauty of <clears throat> excuse me of day to day life here. You know, having a chat and these little moments and and uh, uh, it's the coolest thing when it's with your with your kid, you know, with your son and um, seeing the world through his eyes and he gets excited. You know, I say, "Come, Benji, time to go wash the car," and he yeah, and he screams and he wants to go and. And now um, it's just, it's just, it's just awesome, you know? So, so yeah, it's one of the joys um, that I have and, and one of our little, little things that we do father and son um, with a little bit of a, a side and, you know, a, a, an intention there that he learns a bit of responsibility and learns some routines and learns that he has to take care of things. And, and yeah, I just absolutely love it, man. Uh, so, yeah. So yesterday we were there, we, we I upgraded him to, to wiping the windows. <laughs> you know, not just not just the wheels and the lights. So uh, yeah, he loves it. He loves it, and I I love it. I mean, just having him there with me, and it's just awesome. So so yeah. And what what are some of your, I guess, greatest lessons maybe since you become a dad? Oh man, probably probably the biggest one is probably projection. Um, in the sense that we project a hell of a lot as people as human beings you know we we carry a lot of stuff um if it's stuff that we don't resolve if it's stuff that we're not aware of um you know i'll i'll i'll, I'll sometimes have an outburst with my kids and um and literally like when i'm finished i'm like shit that had nothing to do with them that's something that i'm carrying a stress that i'm carrying or i'm worried about a meeting or i'm worried about a client or um, and I suppose that's, that's kind of what it is. It's something that I'm still, it's something that I'm still wanting to be better at and, and learn. Um, but just being able to take a step back and when you're angry about something to do with your kids and go, why am I angry right now? Like, is this something that I should be angry about? Is it something that I should be disciplining them about? Is it something I should be letting go? Is it something that I should be looking myself in the mirror and going why are you feeling this way um and, and that's probably been the hugest thing is that is that kind of inflection you know that looking at yourself and going okay wh why am i feeling this right now um and yeah man because because you're you're i see it with with my girls and i see it with my boy and your words are your words hold so much weight for them regardless of what age they are whether they're four five twelve eighteen the stuff that you say in in the moment, in the heat of the moment, the stuff that you say because you're having a shit day, they'll remember that. You know, that will be stuff that they carry, that could potentially carry with them for years, if not the rest of their lives. And and I suppose that's the thing that I've 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 kind of learned the most. Well, I'm still sorry, put a put a 
punctuation that I'm still learning is, is the, how much we project um, our own insecurities, our own stress, our own trauma, our own life experiences onto, onto them. And, and that's something that I'm, I'm super aware of and, and want to be much, much better at as a, as a parent um, is, is that because you, yeah, man, you, you're, you're holding a life in your hands. Um, and that's quite a scary, it's quite a scary thing. Um, you're holding a, a personality and a, and a, and a fragile mind and a susceptible mind in your, in your hands. And that's, that's, man, that scares the shit out of me, you know? And, and yeah, that's something that I really want to be better at. And I think I have, I think I've got better at it. And I think I've got better at, at taking a step back sometimes and, and kind of just measuring when it's my own baggage. Um, it's an insecure thing to be a parent. It's very, very scary. Um, you're constantly worried about these kids. At the same time, you're constantly worried that you're being, you don't want, you don't want, I don't want to, I don't like, I, I'm always scared that the stuff you do for your kids gets taken for granted, you know? And, and then I'm kind of like, why am I worried about that? Am I worried about that because of, I want to be validated? Or am I worried about that because I want them to be grateful human beings and grateful for the things that they have? And probably it's a bit of both, you know, if, if, if I'm being brutally honest and, and it's about doing what's right for them in the good and the bad, you know, like those life lessons that they, that they need to learn, but picking the right time, um, picking the right moment, sometimes just altering your tone of voice. Yeah, man, it's just, uh, it's a different, it's a different kettle of fish you know marriage is one thing but being a parent as well when you when you are you know because your wife can just tell you you're being a dick you know and uh shut your face and your kid can't because you won't allow that as well you know so um yeah i suppose that's the biggest thing is 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 why am i feeling this way right now why am i reacting this way right now is it my own stuff or is it something that I should be reacting to? Something that I should be managing? I mean, you and I have spoken to it before. You want you want your kids to be resilient. You want to give them a great life, but you also want them to be resilient and to know what to do when things get tough and and have the backbone to to kind of find their way when things are, are rough because you're not going to be around forever. Um, so yeah, probably that's the biggest one, man. Is is projecting and when when am I, when am I projecting and when am I when am I reacting to something that I should be reacting to? I like that so much. And I think that's probably one of almost the most important things for parents to be aware of. I read this amazing book uh, before we had Maya called The Conscious Parent by this lady called Dr. Shafali Tsarberry. I think that's how you pronounce it. And uh, her book, she's like, she's a psychologist and she's obviously had tons and tons and tons of patients. And she said in the book, like her overarching thing is like, your child will teach you more about yourself and be your your teacher more than you are actually its teacher or their teacher and it's like quite a heavy controversial almost thing to say you know that they're going to teach you more than you can kind of teach them yeah and one of the things she specifically speaks about is your kid is going to bring out your shadows right so things that you don't really know, like you were saying now, you know, effectively your projection, is this actually me? Is this my issue? Or is this something the kids, kids done? And, and most of the time it's probably your issue, you know? So if you are conscious to that and you're like, Oh, whoa, what, what did they just expose that I maybe haven't dealt with in my life? Then it's going to allow you to grow a hell of a lot as a, as a person, you know, and of course as a parent and just be a better parent. And um, I think, for me, that was like a such a great book to read and such a, a great thing to be aware of, um, so that I'm I am conscious when when certain things come up and and yeah, it's really really helped me. I think just be be more aware uh, of, of how I am and how I react uh, as a as a parent. So yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, we're not when I'm 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 not uh, condoning people have kids so that they can sort out their issues you know but <laughs> but uh yeah a hundred percent man um i think the 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 i think the the reality is and again still learning and 
you when you get into a a real relationship with somebody that's supposed to be for life and when you have kids it's not about you anymore you know it's about them and it's about doing what's right for them it's about um kind of getting out of your head which is is tough for people that think a lot and feel a lot um and it's about like you said being being conscious of of when you're feeling hurt about something that your wife says or does is that me or is that something i should actually be addressing and then with your kids it's yeah i mean it's even it's even possibly more complicated because i mean like oh, the other day i mean benji my belly was looking a bit big after a bit of traveling and and he was like dad do you have a do you have a do you have a baby in your tummy and and then he was and i'm like what do you mean he's like cuz your tummy's fat and I mean, he's five, you know, he's turning five. So, so he's not saying it the way that somebody would say it at my age to be mean or whatever the case is. But my initial reaction was, I got so, you know, that's offensive. And then, and then I was like, he's, he's five. Like, I mean, he doesn't know even, he doesn't even know what he's saying. He's just stating a fact, you know, and I had to just take that on the chin and yeah, man, it's, it's, it's that it's, it's being conscious of, these are the things that I struggle with and I, I need to keep that far away from, from them, you know, and <clears throat> keep that outside of, of um, arguments and keep that outside of, of issues with, with my kids and my wife. And, and yeah, easier said than done. We were speaking of blind spots the other day, you know, and, and yeah, that's uh, one of the, one of the challenges. And, and, and one of the things that just makes it such a beautiful thing is it, it, it marriage and, and, and raising a family, you know, it's, it's being conscious and, and realizing that you're flawed and, and man, um, since having kids and, and having, you know, stepdaughters and, and my girls, and um, you realize what an amazing, you realize stuff that your, your parents did for you. And, you know, you, I think back now to, how my parents were during certain parts of their lives and thinking they were going through that. They were going through some hectic shit at certain times of their lives and they were being great parents. And I just want to do the same. You know, I want to be able to do the same for, for them and be available and be present and be a so a stable place for them that they know they can go. And, and yeah, that's the goal. I think that's also another great lesson. And um, you know, like to, to kind of look back, you know, and be appreciative of, of your own folks, you know, because at the end of the day, like we're all trying to figure this out, you know, we're all kind of having this dance with life yeah. and uh, we've all got our issues and struggles and stresses and, and whatnot. And yeah, like they're only human, you know, and, and so are we. And uh, I think, yeah. I think it's important to kind of almost like go, okay, cool. Well, maybe I was a bit harsh on my parents, you know, my, my even if it wasn't like, sort of directly maybe just with your own thoughts sometimes you know like oh maybe i should just kind of like to take a step back on on some of those thoughts because <laughs> they were just struggling with their own shit as they were <laughs> as i am now and um i think it's a good thing to kind of really look back at at, at, yeah. at that sort of stuff um you mentioned also in our messages and stuff that uh, benji has taught you to be more curious and you, you even like read a book i think recently on on curiosity so how has how has that been for you? You know, like how do you how do you incorporate your curiosity into being a father? Yeah, I think it's just asking why more often. Um, actually, Benjamin and 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 then Diane, my wife Diane, she's also she's one of the most curious people that I know. Um, you know, she won't just ask the one question; she'll ask five to 10 follow-up questions, you know, you, 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 you kind of like, you you she'll say, um, how does that thing work? And you say, well, it works like this. Well, why does it work like that? You know, well, because it always has, but kind of to be something different. And that for me is, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a curious person. I, I think it's, I think it's something that you lose along the way as an, as an adult. Um, I think I was a lot more curious. I think I took a lot more time as a, as a, as a, as a kid to kind of figure out how something works. I don't know if it's just laziness or we feel like we don't have the time or, um, but certainly like his, the way that he asks questions sometimes just in their simplicity is just so beautiful, you know, and, 
um <laughs> he, he has this thing at the moment where he, he loves listening to um lady gaga uh the song bad romance and which which you know we're, we're driving the other day and i always have to play the song on loop for him and one of the parts she sings i don't want to be friends and he goes hey dada who doesn't she want to be friends with <laughs> and i'm like uh yeah i, I think it was like and you know it's so someone that is it maybe it's a naughty because we that's what we call like a bad person is, is a naughty you know and and he goes, yeah, no, I'm sure it was a naughty. It was a naughty. And and like even like the one day, uh, you know, he loves his superhero movies. And he's like, so where are, are, where are all the naughties, you know? <laughs> and uh, I'm like, I don't know where they are, Benji. And he goes, and he obviously asked somebody else in the family. I don't want to throw this family member under the bus. But he had asked a, a family member, where are all the naughties? And he obviously been asking this question a long time. And they eventually said that they're in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> So he says, yeah, all the naughties are in Russia. So I said, no, 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 no. And then the, like the next day, this Russian kid comes, gets enrolled in his school. <laughs> so it's funny how that works out. But yeah, you know, just the way he asks questions, the way that he looks at the world. Um, I, I, you know, I even said to my pops uh, two days ago, like if I can see, if I could see the world the way he does through his eyes, man, it's just such a much happier and amazing place, you know, because um he'll walk out somewhere and it'll just be like a place that you probably just take for granted, you know, and he'll go, wow, wow. Look at that wall, you know, and you're just like, it's a wall, but, but he sees it with this, this, this amazement and this wonder and, and yeah, definitely he's helped me to be more of a curious person. Um, uh, he'll sit and he'll play with something for ages, just like fiddling with it. And, and yeah, we lose that. Hey, we lose that as, as adults with our, with our rush that we, we probably create for ourselves. Um, but definitely him and, and, and his mom um, have fostered a, a bit more curiosity in me and just how things work and read a little bit more about how that works and, and try to f figure out a different angle or a different solution. And, and then again, the other thing that's helped with the curiosity has been the podcast is asking questions. And it's the best gift that we have sometimes is just to be able to ask somebody, why, why did you do that? Or, how did that happen? And that's, it's, yes, it's incredible. Yeah. I hundred percent agree, but, um, how important questioning is. And I, so before this podcast, I was actually on the beach for about an hour and a half with Maya, which is probably why my face is quite red. <laughs> Cause I was always like, I'm, I try to go in the sun and like protect her from it. So, so, um, got a bit of sunburn, but, um, I was playing with her and like we were digging holes and like, she's, a, she's an 11 month old little girl. Right. And I was just thinking like, how, like um courageous and confident this this little girl is like i would dig a hole and the hole is effectively like deeper than she is tall you know but she was like cool no worries i'm gonna see how i can climb down into this hole that's full of water at the bottom because we got so deep in the in the you know sand and i was just like you couldn't really imagine like many humans doing that you know like me like i'm not necessarily going to climb down a hole that's as tall as me you know what i mean and like but she just did it didn't even think about it sort of thing, you know? So I was like, you know, kids, they can teach you like what curiosity, confidence, courage, and just being carefree. And I think it's, um, it's yeah. a really, a really important thing for us to, to sort of be conscious of and, and allow our kids yeah. to actually teach us. Yeah. Uh, I, I, was, I, yeah. I, I remember, um, uh, we went, one of our first holidays we went, um, on as a family, when I met, um, Diane before Benjamin was born actually, and we went to the Azores. And um, uh, our, our middle daughter, Freddie, at that time, she was, wow, she was six or seven years old. And um, man, uh, we were doing these, um, there were these pools, we went to these pools and, and we were doing these jumps off high boards and jumping in the water. And, and she was just jumping. And, and I still remember there was this woman there and it was an older lady. She must've been in her fifties or sixties. And she was saying that she'd had a really bad experience diving as a kid and she landed badly and, and injured herself. And she was really afraid about jumping. And she was up on this high board jumping, trying to conquer her fear that she'd been up there for like 30 minutes, uh, 40 minutes. And then Freddie just walked past her, greeted her and jumped. And she was just like, Oh, hell no. And then she jumped and it was just amazing. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, these kids have, this bravery and this courage that that we lose along the way and and yeah i think again just back to the parenting thing you you want them not to like my 
I don't want the, my biggest fear is, is that with my girls and with Benji, that I do something as a parent that, m that makes them lose part of those, those beautiful things, the courage, the curiosity, the, 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 um, the confidence. Um, and that's, that's probably my biggest fear as a parent. Like I want him to remain and I want him to see the world the way that he sees it forever. I know that probably won't happen. And, and it's not only in my control. I want my girls to be confident. I want my girls to, to be fearless. Um, and I'm petrified that I do something that, that will make them lose that, you know? And, uh, yeah, that's why parenting is so scary. It's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. <laughs> Yeah, yes, yeah, that, that is something to to really sort of be be conscious of. Eh? Um, yeah, I think society ultimately sort of seems to squeeze a lot of that out of you. Yeah. But um, but if we can raise kids that um, that have those sort of traits, uh, then then we have a better chance so of of them sort of staying that way. Talking about like you know what you do want to teach your kids, like being a leader in your family, like what what does leadership in in your family to you? look like and and feel like what do, what do you actually do to to show them that uh what leadership is like yeah that's something that i've grappled with a lot and and something that i've thought a lot about i used to think it was something that you kind of it was just a right that you had as a parent it was something that you almost had to demand and i, I don't think that way anymore you, you know i think i'm also i grew up in a thing where you know, you, you weren't spoken and you didn't speak and they're spoken to you. You, uh, you had respect for your elders. You let, you let, um, old people eat first, uh, at the table, you know, you, um, these kind of things. And I, and I think you, you kind of, and I, and I, and I think I, I came in thinking, okay, that's something that must be demanded or, or given straight away. And, and, I think our situation is a bit unique because it, it, my two daughters aren't mine. They, I, you know, they, I, they, they're not, they're not from me. Um, I treat them like my own. And, and I think that's part of the struggle I think is that you come in going, well, they, they need to treat me like a father figure or like the leader of the household. And I'm not that person yet, you know? Um, and uh, the same thing in a marriage and the same thing with, with, with Benji and, now what I've really learned is um, leadership in that sense. So, I mean, certainly with leadership in terms of, of, of a marriage, it's a partnership. You know, there's parts of our lives that die takes the lead and there's parts of our lives that I need to at, at times, you know, and, and it's about knowing when those moments come up and, and being, being your best and being present and being the, um, the man that you need to be at that time, you know, for the good of these other people that are depending on you. Um, and then in terms of the kids, again, it's just being the best man that you can be for them. You know, it's, it's those things that they need to see in a parent or in a dad or is someone that's got their shit together, someone that works hard, someone that's a good human being, someone that loves their mother. Um, yeah, just doing those things right and doing them consistently right and showing up. And, um, that's, that's leadership on a lot of, in a lot of ways, you know, uh, if you think about all the good leaders in the world, they were the ones that they did, they did the shit that they spoke about. They did it and they did it well and consistently well. And, and I think that's really what it's about. It's about you know, getting up, showing up and being as consistent as you can be every single day for these, for these people that need you, um, in good and bad times. Yeah, I, I agree with that entirely. I, I think a great trait of leadership is actually teaching through action. So, you know, if you want people to actually follow you or to, to listen to you, you kind of need to take action yourself as a person. And rather than opposed to telling people what to do, you know, a lot of people try to lead that way. They lead through almost fear and yeah. that might get you sort of, you know, caught away of where you want your, your people to get. 
but you know because you're not empowering them because you're not leading through action uh, you actually don't get far with that sort of uh, way of leadership i definitely you know, like what you say about you know leading with action and 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 consistency yeah. yeah the fear thing i think is something that i had to i mean i remember i remember you know, Di, Di pulled me up a couple of times about that and, and like, listen, they're not going to respond to fear, you know, and they will respond to a degree, but it's not sustainable. It's not something because at the end of the day, fear doesn't help. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not something that's going to improve things. It's going to be, you know, I think there, there should always be respect and to a degree, you know, there's no harm when kids are a little bit afraid that they've pissed off their parents. I think that's still something that's important, but um, it can't be the the sole driver, you know. And um, and I think the reality is again, you're raising human beings that are all a little bit different, that are layered different, that are wired differently for whatever reason. You know, you can you've seen it. Uh, you you can have a brother and sister who grew up in the exact same house, and they're completely different human beings. And um, and. I think with parenting <clears throat> and I mean, with any kind of relationship, people need, to, you can say to people, I'm there, I'm here. I'm the one that's going to help with this. or I'm the one that's going to be responsible for this, but what they really need is to be able to feel that. And it's about how do I make sure they feel that. And it's just, again, just showing up and being consistent and in actions, not, not only in action, not only in word, but in action as well. Yeah, for sure. I think part of being a leader and a, a dad and, and a husband uh, is having tough conversations. And there's, I think there's ways to have tough conversations. Do you have any kind of like strategies or advice uh, on ways to kind of broach tough conversations in, I guess, in your relationships in general, maybe, or, or you can be more specific yeah. if you want. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think in general, it, it it's um it's about being I, I think it's really about being aware and empathetic about where that person is at that time you know and if you can you know when you're talking about a four-year-old kid it's it, it's not as complicated because usually when a, a four-year-old kid is upset it's normally because they're tired or hungry or you've said something that's upset them you know, when it comes to adults, it becomes way more complex and stuff, you know. So I think it's kind of like having the awareness to know maybe now is not the time to have that conversation. <clears throat> or maybe this is the tone of voice I should be speaking in as opposed to yelling or as opposed to being a little bit more ag aggressive is not the right word, but yeah, maybe aggressive. Um, <clears throat> I think really it boils down to being aware of where that person is at, at that very moment, what's brought them to this point. Um, if it's a teenage daughter, why is she in that position today? Why is she in that mood today? Uh, a lot of the time, you know, we, 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 the kind of the, 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 what's the word that I'm looking for now? Um, not the stigma, but, um, you know, kind of like we always talk about how we can't read, you know, a teenage a girl's mind, but, but probably if you look back and go, and if you know what's happening well enough in your kid's life or in your wife's life, you know that, okay, there's been accumulation of things that have happened over the last two days or over the last four hours that have brought them to this point. And it's about being aware of that. Uh, it's about being aware of their state of mind at that moment, I think is the biggest thing. And and that's something where like, like yeah, I do struggle with that. You, when you've kind of got to the boiling point, it's really, really hard to take a step and go, how is this person feeling right now? Cause I'm fucking off my head, but how are they feeling right now? And why are they feeling? And why have they said what they've said? And why have they used that tone of voice? And why have they acted that way? And I think that's really the biggest thing. And, and that's what makes it so interesting and layered these relationships and family and everything is i'm feeling this way right now why are they feeling that way right now let's kind of like try to deconstruct all of this you know and 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 it's something that i'm getting better at but i 
a lot of room for improvement still. So work in progress uh, yeah. on that one. Yeah, man. Uh, for sure. Heated discussions and things said in the moment uh, are things, I guess, you almost need to have a strategy for. Like, you know, yeah. especially even as a couple, I, I reckon, you, you almost need to go, okay, look, we've reached that moment. <laughs> yeah. let's, um, let's have a time out. And, and we, we come back in like, say, five minutes or so, and we just kind of, um, we sort yeah. of get ourselves together. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it, it, it's a nice thing to believe you can do that, but she's like in the moment sometimes. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's hard yeah. to kind of take a step back. Yeah. Dude, I think, I think one of the things that I'm, 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 I'm learning more, and this is something that Di, Diane has, has really um, taught me, is um there, there just needs to be constant communication like there just needs to be and 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 then and, and not only constant communication but an awareness within that communication because it's one thing you know i can get home and i've had like a really busy day and i can say and i can say man this and this and this happened at school today you know um and i can go okay those things happened and i can move on you know but if I take a step back while she's telling me this happened today, this happened today, this happened today, I need to be aware of why is she telling me those specific things? Cause there's a thousand things that happen in the day. Why is it those things that she's choosing to talk about? There's a reason for that. And probably the right question is, well, how did you feel? You know, how did that make you feel? Because I think what happens so much in modern day relationships where it's, um, you're at work all day, then it's uh, getting home, getting the kids dinner, then it's um, getting the kids ready for bed, then it's phones, then it's, well, instead of let, instead of sitting down and having a chat, let's rather put on something on television. And we, we've lost that communication. We've lost how to talk to each other. And I find with myself, um, it's when there's that failure to communicate over, over a period of time, it all builds up to the point that what is the thing that breaks the camel's back or the thing that causes the overload is not actually that bad. It's an accumulation of things that haven't been addressed previously. And I think that's something that, again, work in progress, something that I've got to get much better at, but, but definitely something that I see uh, certainly in a relationship. Um, with kids, it's a little bit different because they will tend to express themselves quicker than adults. Adults will will push stuff aside and it's not the right time to talk about it. I don't feel like it. Whereas kids will, you know, like literally I'm hungry or I'm feeling sad or whatever. It's, 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 it, they're a bit more transparent in that way. And again, it's something that I think they lose along the way and we lose along the way. Um, but I do feel like it's it's about constant communication and then about being aware of this thing that happened to you today means something and why does it mean something why do you feel the way that you feel and that's super important i think in terms of communication i think we we communicate sometimes just to talk but not to listen um we communicate for the sake of it tell me about your day without actually going that little bit deeper and and maybe the the next question after what happened today should be well what how did it feel or how did it make you feel and why did you feel that way and and I think it's just about finding those things that are important to each other um, along the way. Um, so, so yeah, mm. communication is huge, but it needs to be communication with a bit more of purpose, I think. Yeah, yeah. I like I like that a hell of a lot, bud. Um, some really, some really profound stuff there. Actually, you know, like I always, I always... making it up as I go along. Making but it up I... as I go along. I'll, I'll, I, 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 I have to apply it to myself a lot of the time as well. I find, yeah, we, we all, a lot of us are, are good at sort of um, giving advice. And then um, when it comes to our own lives, we, we're flipping pretty average at <laughs> a lot of those things ourselves. Um, but I think that's kind of like a, a human trait, you know, we, when this is what we spoke about this week was just our own blind spots and yeah. how sometimes it's like glaringly obvious to somebody else, like, I guess what our issue is and to us we're like no I'm fucking perfect you know <laughs> don't yeah, yeah. You, you sort of thing so um so yeah but yeah. anyway <clears throat> just, just just kind of moving on a little bit um mm. we recently did like a fitness program together for for three months which was which was super super awesome and the 
it, so it was basically like a, just just four or five of us on on WhatsApp, and we had like exercises we would do each week, and we were all based in Brazil and you were the only guy in, in Portugal. So you were a few hours ahead of us and like each morning I would wake up and you would have, you'd be, you would have like posted, okay, cool. I've done my exercise and my, and I was like, wow, you like are super kind of motivated and um, I guess self-motivated as well. And then through discussions with you, you kind of said, you know, that's definitely what you are, but when you kind of have something to do, you almost have like, OCD tendencies uh, to stick at it and get things done. Has that kind of like always been the case? Is it, or is it something kind of which you've kind of like grown into? And do you see it as a good thing or bad thing? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say I'm an OCD um, about that kind of stuff. I think I've always been quite a stubborn guy um, in good ways and bad ways. Um, <clears throat> definitely being stubborn is what kept me alive, uh, when I was, when I, when I was on the brink at times with my health, um, I'm also kind of like, I don't like leaving things unfinished, I suppose. Um, I don't want to, I don't like letting people down. So for me, that group mentality where, you know, you're in a team and, if I don't do it, you know, um, that was important to me as well. Um, but definitely, yeah, if I do something, I want to do it, I want to do it right. And I want to give it my all. I think there's a big difference between doing it perfectly and doing it with giving it your all, because sometimes we give our all at something and it's still not perfect. Um, <clears throat> but I love that, you know, that kind of that challenge, you got to get up and do this on this day. You got to do this the next day. Uh, the 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 team aspect of it that you're doing this together, and the little bit of competitiveness thrown in there of, hey, like I want to get this done. You know, uh, I think that was that was very cool. Um, but yeah, definitely something that I've cultivated. I think I I the I, th I think. If I look back to my younger years, there was probably I was probably way less disciplined with certain things. Certainly, from a, a professional perspective, um, certainly looking after myself, um, I was less dis disciplined. I can be way better again. Um, it's something that I that like it's something that we spoke about the other day. Like I want to create habits um, where I'm doing something regularly that is better for that part of my life. Uh, this in this in this way physically um but yeah it's something that i've had to cultivate i think over time um and again something that i've learned with along the way with with certain people um my pops um my 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 wife you know they show you how to be committed they show you how to be prepared they show you how to do something the way it should be done um, and that's important. And, and that's something I definitely want to pass on to my kids is, is doing things correctly and, and discipline and being self-motivated and, and those kind of things. So, yeah, that's definitely something that I've probably cultivated along the way. Um, I mean, there was always, there's always been something inside me, which wherever that came from, uh, that's a good question of, of being driven and not giving up. Um, you know, I remember, you know, I wasn't the best rugby player. Um, I wasn't the biggest guy on the field. I wasn't the fastest guy on the field, but I managed to always stick it out with some of the best players. And there was that kind of never quit mentality that I, that I've always had. Um, but certainly from a point of view of being disciplined and self-motivated, that stuff that I've had to cultivate along the way for sure. Mm. Yeah, that's super cool, man. Uh, some of the things that, that we've been speaking about recently that, that I like, you know, I feel like I've got to know you so well, like in the last kind of three years Me through too. through audio message. And it's been, it's actually been like a really special, special thing. It's almost like modern age pen pals. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's, it, totally. it's been, it's been super cool. And I've really like grown to, to love the sort of way you think. And, and also, you know, been really interested in the things that you do and that you, and that you've been interested in. And one of the things that I've found out that we both really enjoy is actually reading and I just wanted to find out, is there like, say, two books or, or maybe two people, but, but you can choose, that have 
really kind of influenced your kind of way of seeing the world and, and perhaps perhaps altered the way you see the world um, and, and the way you live? In terms of books? In terms of books, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a very good question. Uh, I must say, late, I've, I've been on a bit of a hiatus with reading because I, I got to a point where I was reading so much stuff that I, I think I just got a bit, a bit lost, you know, and almost bored, I suppose. Um, and I kind of just feel like I need to find that one book that grabs me again. Um, I suppose the one book that, that I always remember and, and I read it at a time in my life that I really needed to was Ego is the Enemy with, uh, with Ryan Holiday. Ryan Holiday, right? I think. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That was amazing because you, you always kind of think of ego as pride. And, um, and that book takes you a lot deeper into what ego is and, and how much we bring ego into a lot of things. And ego is not just pride. It's also insecurity. It's also baggage. It's also putting our own spin on things, um, reacting the way that we react because of our own, our own, uh, ourselves, as opposed to situations, as opposed to the other person, as opposed to the circumstances. Um, so ego in the ego um, is the enemy was huge for me. And probably I should read it again, just to get back on the, the reading um, bike. Um, that was a, that was a massive one. Um, and in terms of genre, I've always been drawn to um, sports books. Actually, I love, I love reading about, you know, former captains. Uh, Victor Matfield's book was amazing. Jake White's book was incredible. Um, just about how, I guess they, they, that, you know, the triumph in, in the face of adversity, but also their mentality in, 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 in why they were able to succeed at certain things. Um, I've read a couple of American football books and stuff like that as well. And, and that stuff's amazing. I, I love um, books that, that go into psychology into, we do this because of this, what well, we think this way because of certain things, um, how to alter that, how to alter um, long held beliefs or, or ways of thinking that have held you back. I think that's stuff that's so interesting. Um, so definitely ego is the enemy. And then, and then that kind of genre of, you know, leadership and sports and, and, um, that's been, yeah, that's been amazing for me. But again, I mean, one book that I read randomly the, a while ago was called the history, I think it was called history men. And it was about, um, uh, a group of a team that was put together after the uh, the war with Hitler, because what Hitler had been doing was um, systematically removing all of the art out of Europe. And he was, his idea was to build his old, like this whole artistic district uh, around where he lived. And he was literally stealing all of the art from Austria and France. And, and this team of, of a mixture of guys, Americans, British, were 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 um sanctioned to go and retrieve the art and it was just awesome like just a, such an interesting interesting story so i like a bit of history as well i like a bit of um uh i like a bit of uh, um uh real life events and stuff like that so yeah i do like a good documentary i mean a good uh, autobiography that's for sure um love that kind of stuff as well I think uh, the book is called Monuments Men. Uh, and Monuments actually, Men, that's it. Yeah, yeah that's actually, the one. You, you told me about it, actually. And I've, there's I've a film. It. There's a film about it, but the film doesn't do it justice as as normal. Um, the book is is really good. Of Monuments course. Men, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I was also like a huge autobiography autobiography fan for a long, long time. And um, yeah, I mean, geez, I've read a lot of different guys' autobiographies and when I when I kind of almost think back on it now and then I think about the podcast, I'm like, well, I've almost like always been interested in people's stories, you know? And yeah, um, yeah I think autobiographies are fantastic books. So, but uh, just to kind of um, wrap this up then, uh, mm. what, what are you, what are you currently working on? Like what is exciting you most about life? And then where can people get in touch with you if they, if they want to kind of reach out? Yeah, um, it's a very good question. Uh, yeah, the the podcast um, certainly people can listen in on that. Uh, Portugal: The Simple Life comes out every Monday. 
um, on all the, the different channels. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, we. I, I think it's just living. Um, you, we have, we have a busy life. Um, work is 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 my is is takes up a lot of time, of course, and I'm loving that. I'm loving I'm loving doing what I do. I've got a great team of people that I work with, and and that's very rewarding. And um, and then the rest, man, is just again just being. It's just again just trying to make be the best in those different different aspects of my life um being a good dad being a good husband um being a good man um building a life that that i'm proud of um but a life that we're going to enjoy the life that we the life that we want um sometimes i feel like sometimes i feel like there's a lot of things juggling at the same time um, and that can be a bit overwhelming sometimes. Um, but yeah, man, just super excited about sort of the next, the next years that the, that life has in store and, and, uh, what I'm going to be doing with, with work, with, with the podcast, with my, my wife and my kids. Um, so yeah, those are the things that are, are exciting me the most. That's very cool, bud. Um, and we've asked you this question before, but, and I'd be interested to hear what your answer is this time and then go back and listen to what you said last time. But what does being ridiculously human mean to you? Yeah, so the last time I think I said something like everyone's got their own journey and just trying to do the best they can, which I think still is uh, pretty cool. Um, to steal a, to steal a, 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 a much used um, kind of phrase or idea from the movie Shrek, um shrek always talks about that he has uh he had lots of layers and the donkey says to him um why is it because you stink and no no shrek says i'm like an, i'm like an onion ogres are like onions because and the donkey says why because they stink no no why because they make you cry <laughs> no no but because they have layers and i and i think and it's stuff that you and i have talked about a lot and and in you know, just in, in my relationship and in how things have developed in my life, like we are so layered, everybody is so layered in terms of the, the things that have happened. Uh, there's so many different layers to each person based on how they're being brought up, based on what's happened in their lives, circumstances, events, traumas. Um, and I think that's what makes us ridiculously human is, and then how do we kind of piece together those layers and how do we make sure that the layers that are there are, are, are I suppose the, are, are all contributing to the best possible person that we can be. Um, so I think that's what makes us ridiculously human because we're ridiculously layered. <laughs> that's very true indeed. And I think sometimes we also need to try and remove those layers because some of them are there by, you know, I guess by design, yeah. but also probably they shouldn't be there. So it's a good thing for us to sometimes remove those layers. And yeah, uh, yeah but I just wanted to say, listen, like, thanks so much for for coming on the show. Thanks again for pleasure, taking man. me on to to get this going again. I, I can't even begin to explain to you how much I've loved speaking to people again, and how much I've realized that I that I've missed it. And it's it really like it's kind of purposeful and and fulfilling. So. Um, you know, and this conversation is is one of those sort of conversations whereby like I almost have to kind of like sit back and go, yes, yeah, see, I've known this oak for such a long time. And, you know, we've enjoyed many great moments together. And this is a this is a great moment. And it's like we've we've actually gone like we've been pretty flipping serious, <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's kind of, I guess, in a way, I think it's it's a cool thing, you know, to to talk about. Uh, things that are are important and yeah. uh, just sort of sitting back and and listening to your thoughts and and ways of of how you've done things and the the way that you view the world has, has been just amazing so yeah thanks again bud uh, you're, you're a true legend um, you're one of my favorite humans and uh yeah just thanks again buddy. thanks buddy likewise and i'm glad that your voice is back on the you definitely definitely have a face for podcasts you know <laughs> you're right but, man, especially uh, <laughs> today <laughs> but no i'm i'm super glad that the the ridiculously human podcasts are back out on the are back out on the airwaves um 
it inspired me so much um, when when you guys are doing it in good times and bad times. Um, so yeah, it's it's uh, it's a joy that you're you're doing this again. So it's awesome. Awesome. Thanks, bud. Mm-hmm.